This week, as I was preparing for the message this morning, on Tuesday nights I do Soul Space. By the way, any of you would be welcome to join us in Soul Space if you wanted to. But in Soul Space, we're working our way through uh, using a a reading process, uh, Lexio Divina. I don't want to go into it, but it's just a way to read scripture, to listen for what God is saying in it. And we read the story of the callings of Peter's brother Andrew and James and John. And I heard some words in there, and I was sure that I needed to change my message. In fact, I spent two days saying, okay, I definitely need to change that message to the whole four calling story because it makes a lot of sense. And by, th- by Thursday, I was like, no, I think I got to preach Moses. Why am I trying to avoid the Moses story? After all, if you remember, and if you haven't been along, you can go back and look at the first uh, message in this sermon series called Moses, Paul, and James, where the James is cleverly played by your pastor uh, online, not by James, the brother of Jesus. So uh, uh, if you go back to there, you'll realize that when I first experienced or thought about or tried to describe my call... Uh, my calling to the United Methodist Church, because you have to describe it in order to be ordained or enter that process, you have to describe what your calling was like and where it... So I looked for the biggies in the Bible to try to figure that out, and Moses was a biggie. And then I said, but not everybody experiences calls like that. In fact, most of us don't. So then I preached about some other guys, and now I've gone... And gals. And now I've gone back to Moses. Oh, great. The burning bush, James. I thought you told us we were going to talk about ordinary callings. We are. But you know, I have to preach a little bit with a twist. So this morning, I want you to hear this delightful story again. And then I'll, I'll probably uh, illustrate for you some of the rest of the story without reading the whole thing, because it's, it's long. And, you know, it would be the sermon itself. So, Moses. Moses was keeping the flock of his father-in-law Jethro, the priest of Midian. He led his flock beyond the wilderness and came to Horeb, the mountain of God. There the angel of the Lord appeared to him in the flame of fire out of a bush. He looked and the bush was blazing and yet it wasn't consumed. Moses said, I must turn aside and look at this great sight and see why the bush is not burned up. When the Lord saw he had turned aside to see, God called to him out of the bush, Moses, Moses. Okay, I don't know what God sounds like, so that was my best, uh, you know, God impression as, uh, you know, me. Uh, And he said, Moses said, here I am. Then he said, come no closer. Remove the sandals from your feet, for the place on which you are standing is holy ground. He said further, I am the God of your father, the God of Abraham, the God of Isaac, the God of Jacob. And Moses hid his face, for he was afraid. All right, that's enough for right now. No more voices. When my children were small and I tried to read the nighttime bedtime stories with different voices, they would always say, Dad, use your normal voice. And the problem is we have no idea what the normal voice of God sounds like. We have no idea. So uh, it's just as likely to have a very high pitch uh, as it is to have a very low pitch. But I happen to have low pitch you know, built into my voice, so I thought I'd throw that in there. I want to say to you, first of all, about this wonderful story, that in spite of the fact that many people in my ministry time have approached me and said, why can't I have a call like Moses? Why can't I have a burning bush that calls to me in the front yard that is burning but not consumed? And, uh, you know, a flippant but true response is, because you're not Moses. (laughs) Uh, That's why you don't get a call like Moses. You get a call like you. But that's kind of a flippant response, although it's a true response. 
The bottom line is, I don't think you really want, I don't think I really want a burning bush. Because then it would be unambiguous about what I'm supposed to do with my life. What would be my excuse for not doing what God asked? If God appeared in the burning bush, started talking to me and saying, James, I need you to go and do X. When I started doing Y instead, what would my excuse be? You know, God spoke, to, I, you asked for a burning bush, I told you what I wanted, and now you're doing something else. So I think really most of us don't want exactly to know what God wants from us. I mean, after all, if God told us specific, I mean, God, God painted some really general pictures. Everybody came to Jesus and said, hey, what are the most important things I need to do in this life? The biggest commandments, love God, love yourself. How well are you doing with that one? <laughs> how, how well am I doing with that one? There are moments I'm not feeling all that loving. And if you know me and if you've been around me for a while, you know sometimes you don't feel the love coming off of me. <laughs> you feel something else. Something else altogether. If we can't follow the simple general rules that Jesus has sort of laid out for us, why do we expect that if he gave us something specific to do, that we would do that? Why? I, I, I think it would be cool. I think it would be cool to have a burning bush. But I think that God has given us a heart that's meant to be developed to receive whatever God wants for us to receive when we're ready to receive it, and not before. We have to be prepared for that, have to be ready for that. And then our burning bush may not look like a burning bush at all. It may look like a conversation with a friend over coffee where suddenly as we listen to them talking, we hear between their words about whatever they're talking about, we hear an uplifted call from God. Now, it's really interesting. Uh, Mark and I were going back and forth about this. Uh, Mark is the designer. Mark Hayes is the designer of our cool slides. And I love, I love these beautiful slides. Every week, he, he sends me like three or four possibilities. One of them he sent me oh, would have dated me. You know, it was a letter in the mailbox, and it said that return address was God, and then it had, you know, information on it, who it was addressed to, and then it said, it, you know, in big letters, big red letters, please respond. And of course, that dates me as a 20th century people. Who uses snail mail anymore? Who actually even knows how to mail one of those things? I, you know, probably not a lot of us. So we went for the most current. Do you really want to know that God is calling and what God's asking you to do? Do you really? Because if you really do, you will do the kinds of things that prepare you to hear what God wants to say. You'll practice what you do know. And what you do know is that God wants you to love your neighbor as yourself. You know that God wants you to love God. You know that God cares about you right where you are, but also everybody else around you. And not just everybody else who is a human being, but all of the animal life and all the grass. Uh, in fact, I suspect God even cares about the asphalt because that's God. God's got love enough to go around. It's infinite. It's infinite. And maybe if we started attuning ourselves to the love of God, and give, giving God a moment to get a word in edgewise, we might have been walking past our burning bush all week long. Not only all week long, all month long. Maybe not all month long, maybe all year long. Every single day we walk by it. And do we see it? You know why? We're not attuned to it. we are already got our plan, and our plan's the right plan. Imagine for a moment if Moses, in this second 40 years of his life, Traditionally, we divide Moses' life into three sets of 40 years. And 40 just means a long time. He was born and raised in Egypt. He killed somebody, he had to run away. He spends 40 years watching his father-in-law's sheep. He doesn't have a father-in-law. He has to meet his father-in-law and his daughter, get married, 40 years watching the sheep. And then he goes to deliver his people from Egypt. That's the third 40 years. 
And then he gets him to the promised land, and then he dies, because he doesn't get to go into the promised land. That's a side issue. We're not going there. But the bottom line is, what if he just saw his whole life was about watching sheep? That's all I want to do. Looks up and sees a bush burning and just keeps watching the sheep. Because that's all his mind is. How can I grow some more sheep? How can I get a few more of those sheep going? You know, I like the black sheep and I like the white sheep. What would happen if I cross bred them? You know, and I've got sort of gray sheep. Or maybe black and white sheep or spotted sheep. It would be really cool. And instead of noticing this burning bush flashing brightly over here, I'm focused on how I can do my thing how I can live into my sense of what my calling is. Now, I'm sure that's not any of you, but that's me. I've got a picture of what this calling is supposed to be, so I am working my way to make that happen. And if there seems to be a detour, I'm not taking the detour. I'm not going that way. I'm going my way. But James, the bridge is out. I don't care if the bridge is out. I'm going that way because that's me. Maybe the bridge is out because God wants you to go this long way around. No! I know what's right. I know what's right. So maybe, maybe we don't need or want a burning bush, or maybe we're just not laying the groundwork to actually see the burning bush when it happens. There's also a danger of burning bushes. I was, I was talking with Megan before worship about the danger of burning bushes. The danger of burning bushes is that we enshrine it. That we always live for that burning bush. You know, I was 13 years old. I saw a bush that was on fire and God called me. I never grow up to be the 58-year-old self that I'm meant to be, that God intended me to be, because I keep living in the 13-year-old guy that saw the burning bush. My idea of God, my sense of love, my hope to be a fully mature human being that God sees in me is thwarted because I keep going back to bow down to a burning bush that happened for me, what, 45 years ago. I didn't have a burning bush when I was 13, by the way. I just randomly picked the number 13. It's the number of adulthood. It seemed really good. I liked it. That was just a random number. I didn't ever see a burning bush. I wish I had, but I don't really wish I had. Because if I enshrine the burning bush of the 13-year-old James, I will never be the 58-year-old James that God wants me to be. And I'll start worshiping the burning bush, which is just a messenger of God, not God the eternal. The bush was never for Moses God was merely the voice of God that spoke to him. And even the voice of God scared the bejeebers out of him. What did he do? He covered his face. He turned away because it was overwhelming, just like it would be for you or me. So do we really want a burning bush that we will then start worshiping as God? It's a danger. It's a danger for all of us. The last thing I wanted to say about the burning bush completely escapes me now. So I'm standing here beside myself thinking there was something else really deep and wise I think I was going to say about the burning bush. Uh, but maybe I wasn't. Or maybe uh, five cups of coffee leads me. OK, I do have it written down here. Let me see if there was something maybe important. Uh, oh. I remember what that was. That's why I didn't say it. But I have another thought now. I never have, an, I have another thought now. Maybe you haven't seen the burning bush yet because God knows you're not ready to see the burning bush. Maybe you're not ready. Um, I was reading a scholarly interpretation of, uh, of some material, and I, I shared this with you a couple of weeks ago. Uh, one of the expressions that we often use in the church and have over the millennia is, Lord, I'm not worthy. But maybe a better translation of the word that is often translated as, Lord, I'm not worthy, would be, Lord, I'm not ready. Lord, I'm not ready. 
One of the things that's interesting to me is I'm, I'm reading things these days, uh, you know, after having been sent from the living school and things like that, I'm reading things with a different set of eyes that if I had read two years ago would have meant nothing to me. I wouldn't have been ready to hear them. And yet God has opened up a wider space in me so that I hear them differently. If, if this means anything, if this is trajectory, and I'm, it's dangerous if I worship the trajectory. <laughs> so I'm not worshiping where, where there is. But if this is any sign, then maybe I'm not ready for God to light another burning bush for me yet. Maybe in two years I'll be ready. Maybe I won't ever be ready for the burning bush. Maybe I'll just keep preparing, 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 and being true to the path, trusting that God is with me, that God loves me on this path, wherever I am. The reason I don't get a burning bush like Moses is because I'm not Moses. The reason I haven't gotten a burning bush for James is maybe I have missed it, Maybe it would be dangerous because then suddenly I'd have this great story to tell you every Sunday and I would tell you every Sunday, well, you know, when I saw the burning bush, and then it wouldn't be about God anymore, it'd be about me having seen the burning bush. Maybe I'm not ready because I'm not humble enough yet. Or maybe I'm going to start worshiping the burning bush as if it were God instead of merely a pointer. Any one of those things could describe you. Do you really want a burning bush? Are you really ready now to respond to whatever God asks you to do by laying down everything else to do it? Are you? Maybe you're happy to have more of an ambiguous understanding. Maybe God is preparing your heart above all. And this is where Teilhard gets it right. Above all, trust in the slow work of God. I will tell you one thing I absolutely know right now. That is that God is at work in you right now. God is at work in me right now. I have a vision of where I want to be, and it's not necessarily God's vision. I want to have arrived, and I'm where I am right now which means I've arrived here, but I haven't arrived there. And I don't know where there is. So stop worrying about where there is and start worrying about where here is. What's God doing in me now? How is God changing me now? Am I awake enough to even notice it if it's happening? Perhaps I should try loving a little bit more, God and my neighbor. Perhaps I should even try on for size loving myself a little bit more. And I'm not talking about showering myself or yourself with gifts. What if I recognize that God already loves me and I don't have to prove anything at all? I don't have to prove anything at all for God to keep loving me. I don't have to worry about earning God's love because it's a gift. That's already given me. And if I want to respond to it, that would be good. But if I don't respond to it, God's not going to stop loving me. God's going to keep loving me and hope that it keeps working on me. I think when I read Moses' story, what God wants us to do is keep awake. Be aware that nobody gets the same calling twice. That every one of us is unique. We're part of a larger thing that God is doing and that God speaks to us to be part of that. And God speaks to us when we're ready to hear it. Are you preparing yourself? Are you opening your heart? Are you readying yourself? to hear what God has for you. Be happy you don't have a burning bush like Moses, because you're not Moses. And by the way, Moses spent the next several chapters 
after meeting the burning bush, telling God why he couldn't do what the burning bush asked. They're going to ask me who you are. Well, tell them I am who I am. That's a terrible answer, God. <laughs> uh, uh, I, I can't speak. What if they don't believe I'm really you? I'm really sent by you. <sighs> Fine. I'll give you a special staff. You know, well, I can't speak. I have a stutter, a stammer. Something's going on. I'll send Aaron. Moses, even here in the burning bush, tried to get out of it. Even here in the burning bush. So, maybe just trust in the slow work of God in your life. Trust. Trust in God. Because God is working on you and me which I think is pretty cool. Stay awake, my dear friends, because there may or may not be your own burning bush waiting for you around the corner. But you have to pay attention and listen.